a very good morning to all of you. I hope you are doing good. So let me start with the topic that is traumatic injuries to teeth or um, traumatic injuries in general. So coming to the introduction part, you know a child is not you know, a small adult, but he is yet developing. He is in a dynamic state of growth. That means he is uh, more prone for a fall or injury because of the lack of motor coordination. Sometimes the automobile incidents, accidents, or uh, sports that can also cause fall. So when, whenever we fall, the normal uh, whenever we fall on the on the face, the first thing to be uh, traumatized is the dental uh, soft and hard tissue, that is the teeth. So uh, the extent of injury can be from a mild pain. That means a small piece of enamel can be chipped off to a major uh, injury that is severe maceration injury but this in, uh, in turn gives a psychological impact on the child and and the parent of course so uh, as a dentist we are supposed to uh, reassure them treat them okay so etiology etiology means uh, cause why what why how does it happen that's the main thing so etiology means fall fall as an infant as a tool or due to um, collision in schools then there's bicycle injuries then contact sports contact sports uh, uh, anyone can cross any uh, contact sports okay uh, boxing is one uh, if you see the below uh, the picture you can see rugby that's American football that's also contact sports these are all little violent type of uh, sports like I, I would say violent if but people will be there who disregard my stakeholders. Then uh, RTAs. RTAs means road traffic accidents. And then specially able children. Why I, why I say uh, specially able children? Because uh, they're, even though all most of the children are uh, more, their motor, uh, motor coordination is not that good, specially able children lacks it more uh, compared to a regular child. Then epilepsy. You know epilepsy when the patient gets an epileptic attack, he might fall. So he'll get injured if he falls on the face, then definitely he'll get injured. So the traumatic injuries to the teeth is very much common there. And sometimes child abuse, due to child abuse of the patient can get injuries. So coming to uh, prevalence. Prevalence means the you know the ratio in, in general, how much uh, what the person is, that is prevalence. So most accidents are uh, occurring two to four years because of the uh, lack of motor coordination, and uh, boys are supposed to get more injured due to their uh, in general uh, capacity to play more. I would say. Then whenever they fall, the maxillary centrum are most commonly injured. Then maxillary ladder, then mandibular centrum, mandibular ladder. That's the way it is. Then uh, if it is in a permanent condition, I would say uh, school-aged boys, boys to girls is two, two to one ratio according to various reports okay. so there are a lot of uh, authors trying to do a lot of research so from india um shobha tandem madam she's uh, found out that three to five years five year old child are more prone to enjoy then india sarkar and person 1981 so old we found out that uh, 1 to 14 years there is a prevalence of 0.73%. Then predisposing factors. What are predisposing factors? Predisposing factors means obviously there is a chance to occur, but these factors will add upon the existing conditions. As I told, age, young age, chance of uh, falling is more around 2 years. Then age to 12 years because we are more active in that period. They play a lot of sports. Because of that also. The, there can be injury. So that is predisposing factors. Then occlusion. Occlusion means uh, we all know that the, the how the upper jaw, uh, upper teeth connect to the lower teeth. That's called occlusion. So sometimes over this, that's a horizontal overlap. That is, if it is more than four millimeter, eventually whenever you fall, high chances are there that the man actually sentence are going to be hit. Then developmental defects. Developmental defects. Uh, imagine amelogenesis is imperfect uh, or delivery is imperfect. Uh, this kind of uh, defects attribute to the factor that whenever there is a fault, 
it is going to fracture but with the teeth or the enamel or the tendons already weakened up so there is a chance of uh, fracture even more further when i i told intellectual disabled or the epileptic patient especially this one all this you know uh, add on to the fact that there can be injury and uh, then injury can be worse on them so uh, direct trauma and indirect trauma so when the tooth itself is stuck against the table imagine uh, you are traveling in a car without seat belt okay you go the driver takes a sudden break so you go and hit your um, face on the um, what do you call it? dashboard that is direct trauma you are going to hit your uh, teeth to the dashboard that is direct trauma but in their trauma or is it when the lower jaw goes and forcefully close upon the upper imagine you you are hit on the mandible and mandible goes and hits on the maxilla that's when indirect trauma happens that's called indirect trauma now coming to classification there are lots and lots of classifications on granular trauma but we would like to know what is ellis and davis classification it is uh, classified way back in 1960s so uh, ellis and davis classification you are supposed to know uh, thoroughly so i'll try to explain it class 1 class 2 class 3 class like that nine classes classifications are there class 1 is just a simple fracture of enamel i told you enamel while chipping can be there there's no involvement of tendon there okay class 2 is fracture of involving enamel and tendon so that the sensitivity enamel is gone tendon is involved so sensitivity you can expect then class 3 class 3 means fracture involving enamel tendon and pulp so whenever there is pulp involved there will be pain so you need to end up uh, doing the root canal treatment or worst case scenario you will have to extract it so class 4 uh, teeth that lost vitality due to uh, trauma basically it's a non vital tooth due to trauma the class 5 is aval tooth aval tooth means the entire tooth is gone from the socket not a part the entire tooth so that is aval then class 6 is fracture of root with or without crown fracture so root fracture is basically with or there can be crown fracture there can uh, there won't be a crown fracture but there is fracture of root that is class 6 then class 7 that is displacement of root with or without crown, crown and root fracture then uh, class 8 is crown and mass and mass means a big piece a chunk of it is got that is n mass and class 9 class 9 is fracture of this district so whether it's involving dental enamel bulb whatever it is if it is a class 9 that means the fact uh, any uh, fracture that involves this district is considered as class 9 so uh, if you if somebody asks you for my uh, like so there's an enamel fracture in uh, i say 5 one or 6 one what is the diagnosis so you're supposed to say class 9 any some basis fracture Nothing else. You can't say class 1 fracture there. It has to be class 9. So these are the pictures. Uh, you can see class 1, only enamel, uh, part of enamel is gone. For class 2, you can see uh, both uh, enamel and tendon is involved. And uh, class 3, there is enamel, tendon, and pulp is involved. Class 4, you can see the picture. The color of the tooth is changed. It will become uh, more. Uh, what is it? Non vital to, to be known that there might be internal option but uh, the color of the tooth is changed from a healthy to non healthy. Then class 5, I told you abolition. Abolition means complete uh, disturbance of the tooth from its socket. Then class 6, root fracture, that can be with crack, crown fracture or without crown fracture. Then class 7, that is displacement. Class 6 was uh, fracture, whereas class 7 is displacement. Then class 8, that is a uh, crown and mass. I told you, crown and mass means a big part of it is gone. You can see in the picture, a big part of uh, crown portion is gone. Then class 9, class 9 is, I told you, any, uh, any, uh, what do you say, any fracture that involves um, either enamel, dentin, or point, or all, all these things, or root, anything and everything involving. Uh, well, primary dimension is supposed to be 
termed as under class 9. I hope this much uh, is that um, enough of the introduction part of this class. Later we'll come. Thank you. Thank you.